Liz Griner, this is Sandy Wargo. Please respond to On the Scene. Copy that, Sandy. I'm in rock. Hi, welcome to our show this month. I'm Liz Griner with the Nevada Police Department. And I'm Sandy Wargo with the Nevada Fire District. And this month, welcome to On, On the, the scene. scene. It's Happy Holidays. It's that time of year. So this month, we're here to talk to you about holiday safety. We have a lot to cover today. Sandy, what do you have for us today? Well, I wanted to start off a little bit about the Christmas tree. Whether you have an That's artificial right. tree or a real tree, we want to make sure that you prevent any fire hazards in your home. We go on a lot of calls during the season yeah. because of Christmas trees. One of the things I want you to look for when you purchase a tree, especially when it's a live tree, that you have a fresh cut at the base. It should be about an inch because what happens is after that cut and it's been sitting there in the lot, it forms a seal so that it doesn't absorb water. And we know that it's going to absorb about, I don't know, a quart to a gallon of water wow. for, the, for the tree each day. That's a lot that to is. keep it nice and moist. So once you start to miss that watering, the base will start to seal up and the tree can dry out. A couple of things that you should look for, and we were just talking about this a little bit earlier right. on, the, on the branches, is when you're purchasing the tree, you want to be able to pull down onto the pine needles and take a look to see if there are loose needles that come off into your hand. Oh, wow. When you see that, that's telling you that this tree is already dry and it's probably not the best one for you to purchase. Also, be aware of that in your home because if you're starting to see your tree start to kick off some of these needles, it's telling you it's getting dry. Um, and one more thing, we want to make sure that when we do put the lights on the tree, we make sure that we only go three strands put together per plug. And with the plug, you want to use a power surge protector. Great tip, Sandy. Also, when you have your tree in your home and it's in your front window, and so all the neighbors or anybody passing by can see your beautiful tree after it's been decorated, please be aware of the large amount or quantity of gifts that you're going to be putting under your tree when it is in your front window. Go outside, take a look with your lights on to see what everyone passing by your home can also see. Right. It's a good indicator. If you have a lot of gifts, put them out the night before. But when you leave your home, make sure that you do close your drapes because you don't know if someone's actually going to come up to your window. Take a look to see how many gifts you've got under there. Right. So that's a, a great thing to please try and remember that. Also from your doorway, if you, someone comes to your door and at the holiday time there are deliveries that you get or people coming by for charitable donations, when you open your door, can they see directly into your house and to your tree to also see how many gifts that mm -hmm. you have under there. So be cautious of where you place your tree in regards to your passageways or your windows. Yeah, I usually don't think about things like that. And then with our discussion, when you and I are talking, I learned right. all kinds of things about the preventive measure for burglary and people breaking into your home because they see things. Right, so, and you don't want to have to think about that during the holidays, but unfortunately that's a, what we call a ripe time for burglaries to happen because they do know that you have yeah. gifts in your home. That's too bad, but you're giving them the tip now so that you'll know what to do to prevent that from happening. Great. So what let's else go. do we have? Let's We've go. got lots of things to talk Great. about today. All right. We'll see you in just a second. Hi, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about fire safety in the kitchen. Lots of people say to us, you must be really happy that fire season's over. Fire season's never over. We get a lot of home fires or structure fires, especially in the kitchen during the winter months. More people are cooking, the big turkey in the oven, baking goodies for the holidays. And I want to make sure that you remember a few things. Remember never to leave cooking unattended. If you're cooking, stay near that stove, that oven, even the microwave. That way if something gets out of control, you're there to hold on to it and make sure it doesn't get any worse. If you did have a pan fire, the best thing to do is to turn the heating element off and then take the lid, if you have your oven mitt close by, go ahead, grab that lid and put it right on top of the pan so that that way you suffocate the oxygen in the pan and the fire will go out. The worst thing for you to do is to try to grab that pan and run outside. 
We've seen all kinds of accidents where folks have spilled whatever contents were burning inside. They've burned themselves, caught their carpet on fire, even out into the, the driveway or outside onto the patio. And we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. The other thing I wanted to remember, remind you is, is that if there's a fire in the oven, we want to make sure that once you see that there's a fire in the oven, close the door and turn the heating element off. The worst thing for you to do is to open it and start fanning it. That's going to create a lot more oxygen and make the fire worse. So close it to suffocate the oxygen. Same thing as the lid on the pan. That way the fire will go out. I also want to remind you that steam burns. When people are cooking, they always want to take a peek, and this is the wrong thing to do. The better thing to do is to make sure that any time you lift up the lid, even when you're opening something from the microwave, you want to always use the lid as your shield. So I would open it this way first and let that heat escape first, and then I can go ahead and take a peek or start stirring whatever I'm cooking. That way I won't get a burn in my face. A couple of other things to remember is make sure that you keep any combustibles far, far away from the oven. We don't want to have, if you've noticed at this kitchen, we don't have any paper towels. We don't have any extra towels hanging around. This is a nice clean area, very safe. I don't see a lot of extra things up on top of here that could fall back or create a fire falling forward. So take a look at your kitchen. Make sure that you're good to go for the winter months to prevent any type of home fire in your kitchen. Well, Sandy, winter time is here, and that means people are going to be putting their fireplaces on to get that nice warmth into your home. So can you talk a little bit about fireplace safety? Certainly. We get a lot of fires due to chimneys and things that are put in the fireplace that's not they're not supposed to be there for instance like paper I can't tell you how many fires we go on where people use their Christmas wrapping or they just stuff paper in there and now we end up having an overloaded fireplace um. or a chimney fire we want to remind folks to make sure that you get your chimney cleaned it should be cleaned annually if you're not sure how to get it cleaned or who to contact just look up in the yellow pages. There are lots of companies that are willing and able, and make sure they're certified that they will be able to come out to your home, clean not only the fireplace, but inspect the chimney as right. well for cracks. So Sandy, you mean on Christmas morning, you don't want, after they've opened up all their gifts, you don't want them to put the paper into the fireplace? No, that's a major fire oh, hazard. Oh, good to know. So. I know I've done it, so. Yeah, that's a no-no, so we're not doing that okay. <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Uh, the other thing I wanted to remind you is make sure that you don't keep things stacked near your fireplace. We see people keep newspapers, magazines, and other combustibles right next to the fireplace, and then they can ignite, not from touching the fire, but getting hot, and then it'll combust on its own, and that's going to create a fire in your home. So make sure that you have it nice and clear, just like this fireplace, and obviously we put our, our little yeah. carpet here kind of close, but it's just a good, a good idea to make sure that things are clear. We like to see three or more feet away oh. from the fireplace. And I was taking a look at even things that are hanging below off the mantle. Liz and I were talking about this earlier. Right. And even something like this can become a fire hazard. We see lots of people who have um, paper or plastics that are set up on the mantle or near the fireplace. And that can become a fire hazard. But please, we want them to remember, you can still hang your stockings by the fireplace on Christmas Eve. Just make sure it's off during the evening hours right. when you go to bed. Don't leave your fireplace unattended. That's probably the, the best thing. Right. If you're there, you'll see what's going on and you can prevent anything from happening. Right. I bet you use candles a lot. I do. Well, I Especially got during the um, holidays. I know. It creates such a oh, nice it really does. ambiance. But I'll tell you, we see so many homes that have fires from candles. And we kind of have a little slogan. It's when you go out, blow it out. We want to make sure that you don't leave any candles lit when you leave the room. Not necessarily the house. Of course, when you're leaving the house, you're going to make sure that your fireplace is off, your Christmas tree oh, lights right. are all unplugged and, and off, all the candles are out. But even if you're leaving a room and you're leaving candles going, for instance, in your bedroom while you're out in the kitchen or the living room area, that's just an invitation to fire. We also want to make sure, and I bet you do this at home, you probably use some, some sort of candle holder, which is a great idea. We do see people using candles 
without a candle holder and then we'll have a candle dripping that wax goes down onto the carpet and we can get a fire from that so make sure that you have some kind of kind of candle holder underneath to be able to catch anything that's dripping from that candle itself so yeah, I'm sure you have lots of smoke alarms. I've got them in my house, but I see you've brought a different one I've never seen, so I I'm do. interested in really that one. I'm really excited about the two that we're going to talk about here. Great. This is just the normal smoke alarm that lots of people have in their house. We would like to see that your smoke alarm is in the hallway near all of the bedrooms. Right. And to kick it up a notch, to make sure that you have a smoke alarm in every single bedroom and on every level of your home. That's important. Some people say just outside in the sleeping area, yeah. but you've got electrical components. Some people are smokers. You've got all kinds of reasons that you could have a fire in your room, and you certainly want to be alerted first so that you'll know to get out to fresh air. Lots of people always ask me, well, what is the smoke alarm doing? How does it work? And the reason why we have it mounted up on the ceiling is because it's basically smelling smoke for us. And I know when you're sleeping at night, our senses kind of turn down, right. right? We can't see fire, our eyes are closed, and we can't smell fire. Our senses have turned down, our hearing is turned way down, so we get a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. But this one is smelling 24-7 for you. So while you're sleeping at night, it starts to smell that smoke and it'll start to beep to tell you, hey, there's something going on. And that's a good, good idea to, hey, check your door, see if it's warm or hot to the touch. And if it is, go out that second way out, your window, and then go outside to fresh air to a safe meeting place. But I've got some other ones here. I brought this one that I found, which I think is really cool. And you want to make sure that you get all of those underwriter laboratory um, tested so it should have a UL on this but this one actually goes up into the light socket so you've taken that light bulb out you've put it in the light socket and then you can put the light bulb back in now you're thinking well how is that gonna work the cool thing about this one is is that it has a self-charging battery in oh, it wonderful. so the electrical current whether the switch is on or off. That's what I was wondering on this one. If you turn the switch off, will it turn it off? No. Perfect. There's that current there. But the other really nice feature about this one is that you can test it from the switch. You just need to read the directions on the package, okay. and it'll tell you, I think it's like two quick ones to have a test oh, alarm. Oh, great. And great. then turn it off and then turn it back up. To, to reset it. Okay. So I like this one because we've got a lot of people that have a difficult time getting up high. We like to see these types in the garage, in hallways that um, you have a light switch. So that works really good. But here's my newest one, Liz. I want to hear about this one. This and one's exciting. It has such a nice sleek design, yes. doesn't it? Um, I found this one because I just learned of a study that they're saying children are not responding to beeping smoke alarms. In fact, children are afraid. Even if you test with them and they understand mm -hmm. what the smoke alarm is, in the middle of the night when they're sound asleep and that smoke alarm right. starts to beep, several studies have showed they either pull their covers over their head or they cry or they crawl underneath their bed. And we're thinking, wow, that's really scary to know even that a child has been practicing with that smoke right. alarm. They still so, panic a little bit when they hear that beep, beep, beep. Exactly. Okay. So this one is voice activated with how you can set the uh, recording on it. And then once it smells smoke, it'll actually alert children. So I want to press it okay. for you because on this one, I'm going to test the button here. Denise, get up. There's a fire. You need to evacuate. Denise. Get up. That's a really great idea because it can be the parent's voice telling the child and calling out to them to get up. Exactly. That is a really good one. And studies have shown that children respond to their parents' voice. So having this pre-recording, and these are available in your local stores. So. Wait, you can just get these in any store, you think? You yes. don't have to order online special? No. Great. They're becoming more and more available Wonderful. because of those studies that are coming out. And we're all trying to do what we can to do yeah. to not only prevent fires, but also to educate our families so that if there was a fire, that we know what to do and that we can get out safely. Great. Well, these are some great ideas, Sandy. Hopefully, you'll go out and take a look and check your fire 
um, alarms at home and if they need to be replaced, go out and get some of these new ones that might work for you. I also want to remind everybody when you do leave your house or you're going away for the holidays, put your lights on timers, close all your windows, make sure somebody picks up your mail or have it stopped. Yeah. The same with your newspapers. Holiday season, again, is a prime time for burglaries to happen um, because so many people do travel during the holiday season. Right. And if you are going away and you want to get at that early start, we do not want you to pack your car up with all your gifts the night before. If you need to do that, please make sure your car is in the garage yeah. and not on the street waiting for the family to hop in and take off in the morning. Leave your packages in the house until you get ready to leave. So we've got some more things we want to talk about. We do. We want to go make sure when you're out and about and shopping, it's such a busy time. When you're out shopping, you're busy, your minds are racing, you're making sure you've got, you're checking your list and checking it twice. <laughs> and sometimes you don't maybe have your crime prevention sense when you're out and about. Make sure you have your keys and your purse. Don't carry large amounts of money with you. If you need to, take your checkbook or credit cards because, again, Keep aware of where your purse is, how many packages you're carrying into your car, and especially when you put your packages in your car. After you've finished and you have all your packages and you start heading to your vehicle, make sure you're always busy and you're carrying your packages and you're kind of rushing because you've got a lot of things going on in your mind. Make sure to be aware of your surroundings as you approach your vehicle. As you open your vehicle to put your packages in, make sure if you've, you're carrying your purse, you don't set it down on the ground go ahead and bring it in, put it in front of you so you can always keep your eye on it. Because you're busy loading up your car, you don't know who may be coming up behind you. So just make sure that it's in front of you. As you load up your packages, and on this vehicle, you're gonna be able to see, this has blacked out windows. But don't assume that just because you have blacked out windows that you still cannot see in the vehicle. I can still see all the packages that I've placed in here because I'm close enough. And in a parking lot, when cars pull up next to you or just somebody's walking up and down the aisles, they will look into the windows and be able to see anything that is in there. So if you have windows like this, please still cover it with a sheet or a blanket. If you have a trunk, make sure your packages are in the trunk and not in the back seat. If you have to go into other stores, make sure your vehicle is locked. Please don't forget to lock it and all the windows are rolled up. So Liz, I want to talk a little bit about dryer fires. We get a lot of dryer fires, not only in the winter months, but throughout the year. And one of the reasons we get dryer fires is people leave common combustibles up on top or near the dryer. Cardboard boxes, we want to make sure that that's removed from dryer area. And also papers, magazines, mm -hmm. paper bags. We don't want to have them stored on top of the dryer, down in the slots in between, or even behind the dryer. Okay. I'm I, sure you do that. I put soap <laughs> on top of the dryer, I will confess. <laughs> Not anymore. But the other thing I wanted to remind people is to make sure that every time you use your dryer you clean the lint trap. I wanted to show you on this one right here when you pull the lint trap out and every dryer has different types of lint trap you want to drag your hand down the lint trap to be able to accumulate the amount of lint that's inside the trap. This way you've removed that fire hazard that could possibly happen in your dryer. We take a look at lint as basically kindling so let's make sure we clean that lint trap out and keep that home safe from fire, dryer fires. Thanks, Sandy. Those are some great tips around the um, dryers. Well, that's our show for this month, Sandy. Yeah. We want to wish everybody a happy holiday season. Happy holidays. And a safe holiday season. And we'll be back next year for more on the scene. So from me, Liz Greiner, and the Nevada Police Department, happy holidays. And Sandy Wargo, happy holidays to you too.